this. And I want to also bring this over. I would love it if you would take a moment to introduce yourselves and let me know who you are, where you're from, all that good stuff. I'm gonna fix my camera, yes. Okay, so my morning's been exciting. I went out to the garage, uh, actually just got home from my run and I always leave my keys in the garage so I can actually, um, I need this window so I can get back into the house, right? Because our garage is not attached to our house. And what did I discover? But this huge patch of oil. I had my car in for servicing yesterday and to fix a little thing that was going wrong. And they did something wrong. And so I've spent my morning. Um, my daughter had already left for the morning, taken the car to school. I had to get my husband to drive me up to get her car, to get my car from my daughter, bring it back to the shop. So an extra hour and a half out of my morning. But that's okay because now I'm with you and I am excited to be here. Natalie, so good to see you on Instagram. Um, hello, hello. Natalie is one of my students. It's exciting to have my students come and join us here. All right. Are you ready to rock and roll? Uh, we've got Cecilia from Columbus, Ohio, no camera or microphone on my desktop. That's okay because the way I have it set up, um, you can only type me messages, Celia. So I'm so glad you did that. Thank you for weighing in. I love knowing that you're from Ohio. Thank you, thank you. Those of you who are with me on Instagram or on Facebook, I would also love to know who you are and where you're from. I see some familiar names. We've got DC Michael. Hello, welcome to the webinar. We've got Martha Sluter. She and I have been chums for a long, long time. We've got Kat Petta. I re recognize uh, your name, Kat, and Joanna Phelps. I recognize your name as well. Joanna is from Washington State. Hello, it's good to have you with us. Thank you so much. So today, this is one of my favorite topics. So who am I kidding? I just love teaching holistic health, and I love teaching about iridology, and I love teaching all about, let's do this. I love teaching, there we go. Um, I love teaching about the truth of iridology as I've seen it evolve over the last four decades. And so this is a lot of fun. So today we are talking specifically about comparing Jensenian to constitutional iridology. I can call that comparing apples to oranges. And really, we can also term that as being popular is North American, is Jensenian versus holistic, which is constitutional. Um, that's a really interesting contrast. And I, I put it that way because it's really, I think, very safe to say that most people who practice iridology consider themselves to be holistic. I will suggest to you that that's not always the case when we are looking at iridology and how people practice iridology. Uh, and so I'm going to defend my point very strongly from the perspective of, again, I have been a holistic practitioner for four decades. I know I don't look a day over 21, I'm just kidding. Um, and I, I want you to, to, to know that I don't make these comparisons lightly. I'm a master herbalist, a natural nutrition clinical practitioner, a certified iridologist with IPA, and a certified comprehensive iridology instructor. We're gonna look at a lot of eyes in just a few minutes, but uh, just a little more introduction of myself. I got into holistic healing because in my late teens and early adult years, I had some health problems that the medical world couldn't define. They couldn't tell me whether, they really couldn't tell me why I was having those problems. And then I met this young man who I thought was quite handsome. And as in, who am I kidding? I thought he was drop dead gorgeous. And, um, and we started dating and he taught me what he knew. His mom was into this kind of stuff. He taught me what he had picked up from her and he had done a reel about face with his life. He had been a, what I facetiously call a Twinkies and Coca-Cola guy. And once he started learning what his mom had learned, he really cleaned up his diet, started using supplements and really worked on getting healthy. And so he taught me that stuff. Well, long story short, we ended up getting married. We are still married today, which is very cool. 41 years this July, we're pretty pumped about that. And um, the, the, the foundation that he gave me when we were dating, when we were courting, 
is what got me super excited. I dropped out of university. I was going to be a junior high school teacher and an elementary school teacher. And I dropped out of, after enough credits to graduate, but not enough in any one major because you had to major in either early childhood ed or, or uh, secondary ed. And I had bounced around, so I had, couldn't graduate even though I had way enough credits. Dropped out of that. Uh, we got married, started our family, and I started working in the holistic fields because that is actually where my heart was. I've been interested actually in nutrition and in childbirth, particularly natural childbirth, since my teen years, which was bizarre because I came from a very medical model family that believed in canned food and fried meat, right? And so for me to be interested in something other than that was really bizarre. I am so the black sheep, which I'm perfectly fine with that. Over my years in the industry, I've written many books, which I've self-published. Hi, Tia, great to see you with us on Instagram. Self-published and self-distributed, Pregnancy Naturally, The Herbal Birth Kit Handbook, Healthy Kids Naturally. I have seven children. I have the credentials to write that book. The Essential Guide to Nature Sunshine Products, Biokinesiology and Color Therapy Level 1 and 2, and my most recent writings, The Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology Textbook, which is available to my iridology students in digital format. I've also created courses based around many of these books. I created Herbology Level 1, which was 20 hours of practical herbal training for home use. And those students who did that course were so excited, they said, more, more, more. And so I created another 16 hours of advanced herbal training for practical home use. Created and taught Biokinesiology and Color Therapy Level 1 and Level 2. For several years, I was a certified antenatal or prenatal educator with the ICEA, so I developed those classes and taught them. Um, and my most recent one, which has been several years now, is the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System, which is an IPA-approved iridology certification preparation course. So at the very end of our time together, I will spend about 35 seconds telling you a little bit about the course, giving you some information about it. So I encourage you to hang on and stick with me. For now, are you ready to jump in and do some iridology? If you are, give me a yes in the chat box or in the comments, however you are joining me. Let me know that you are ready. Yes, Joanna, you were fast out of the starting block. So let's go with this. Anybody else ready? Just curious to know if Joanne is the only one. Hi, Emma. Good to see you. It's always good to see you on Instagram. Anybody else ready? All right. Let's start with some iridology maps here because we have to know where we've come from and why I'm where I'm at. When I first started out decades and decades ago, this was the original iridology map. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for saying yes. This was the original Bernard Jensen map. Now, when we look at these on the piece of paper, those circles are about five or six inches across. And that made it really easy to pinpoint some of these very tiny, narrow little areas. But when we shrunk it down to the size of an iris, it made it very difficult to pinpoint these areas accurately because if you were tilted even one or two degrees, suddenly you were talking about the wrong stuff. So after studying uh, Jensenian iridology, which I did and practiced for nearly 10 years before I went, this is not working, I was about ready to quit. And that is when I jumped ship. However, in the interim, I saw this iridology map. And about 30 years after this Bernard Jensen one was done. His daughter-in-law, Ellen Tart Jensen, who is a, now a constitutional iridologist, she has moved away from what she learned from her father-in-law. Uh, she updated the chart. And this was the chart that was created by Harry Wolf, who was the constitutional iridologist who brought constitutional to North America. He was an American born German. He could read and speak German fluently. He got a hold of the Joseph Deck books and started reading them in German, no less, and fell in love with it and started teaching that. And so he created this map as well. Again, it's got little tiny microscopic areas. Now here's the challenge I have with these maps that have little tiny microscopic areas, whether it's something like in here 
or whether it's in here, like Harry has been very specific. He's got an area on his map for the renal pelvis, for instance. If you know your anatomy, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say renal pelvis. And here's the challenge. We don't have a dietary protocol and we don't have a herbal protocol that works specifically on say the renal pelvis. And as such, it maybe doesn't do us a whole lot of good to understand that that's there, right? Uh, we do have things and protocols for both supplements and diet that work on the entire kidney, both kidneys on the entire urinary tract. And so that's where we want to focus if we are truly being holistic. Does that make sense? that we want to focus on the whole, on the whole urinary tract, on the whole body, we want to be holistic. As we subdivide the body into smaller and smaller parts, we come more and more like medical doctors who dissect, they only know their specialty. And if they if you wanna know anything that might be attached, they have to refer you out. So we want to be more holistic. The other issue I have with some of these charts that are so complex is that, again, the areas are so tiny, and some of these areas are very tiny, but they have no metabolic impact. So does the hand really have an effect on the metabolism? Well, not nearly as much as, say, the brain or the pancreas or the digestive tract. So all of those little areas that are not metabolically active can really clutter how we do an assessment and they can bog us down in details that are very likely not important for the situation at hand. This is why I took Bill Caradonna's chart, which I didn't show you there and I should have showed you there. He has a very simplified chart and simplified is not to dumb it down. Simplified is to clean it up and make it so much more practical and useful. So we've taken, he has taken out all of the things like the earlobe and the renal pelvis and the arm and the ankle. And he left on the chart, the major, not the major, all of the organs and glands. Now, when his chart was created, we did not understand that the pancreas actually could happen in four different places in each eye. We didn't understand yet that the heart actually shows up in four places. So when I started teaching several years ago, I approached Bill, who is a dear and valued friend and mentor, and said, how do you feel about me taking your chart as the foundation and updating it? And he went, yeah, go for it, girlfriend. And I was so excited about that, that that is what we did. So we updated it with the latest research. And what does this allow us to do? it allows us to focus on what is truly important. Now you'll see here that on, on this chart, we've color coded, for example, all of the glands that are primarily endocrine are blue. So that we can then begin to correlate and connect the dots between what we see constitutionally in the whole eye and the specific systems as well. And it helps us to connect things so beautifully. This is one of the challenges that we're going to look at in a moment as we start looking at eyes. I'm going to show you how a Jensenian would analyze eyes, and then I'm going to show you how a constitutional person would analyze the eyes. So DC says, so it is too reductionistic, the old system versus the interconnections we know to be there. Yes. Do you find it's helpful in acute tissues or do you find that by addressing the whole system, we also see the indirect effect on the others clearing up as well? Very good question, DC. So one of the things that we need to keep in mind as we are looking at iridology is Jensen said eyes would change right, that you would do a cleanse, you would do supplements, and the eyes would change. That was my point of frustration 10 years in. I had an iridology camera, I would put myself on cleanses, I did some high powered cleanses, I'll tell you. Um, and I've dissolved things that were being suspected as cancerous tumors in my own body and things like that. I did not see my eyes change at all. I've never seen eyes change as a result of cleansing. I've never seen pigment disappear. I've never seen lines change. 
what I've seen is health improve. The eyes are inherent. They are genetic. They show us where the strengths and weaknesses are. So when we understand our client's symptoms and we understand what they are doing with their life and with their health, and we understand the eyes and how the markings are interconnected, that all helps us to understand why they've got their symptoms. And then we can work with what they're already doing and shift that to help them be optimal in how they're supporting their health. And then we can see their health improve. Our goal is not to change their eyes because that doesn't happen because the eyes are genetic. So we will see, as we look at the constitution, we will see symptoms improve globally, which is so exciting, right? That you, you, the client comes in saying they have this one problem, and as you talk to them, you understand they actually have several problems that are interconnected. You look at their eyes and you understand the interconnectedness. So you know that when you make specific changes that are going to affect the root cause, you are going to see all of these dominoes fall. They're all going to start coming into perspective and into alignment. Does that help, DC? Does that explain your, does that answer your question for you? So as a Jensenian iridologist, and hi, Lani Derm, good to see you. As a Jensenian iridologist, I would have looked at this iris, and I would have told them things like, your lymphatic system is completely messed up. It's totally congested. I would have told them that their skin was an absolute mess. It wasn't breathing and respiring properly. It was very congested. I would have told them that they were way too over acid and that I would expect them to have all kinds of acid imbalance kinds of problems. I would have told them that their transverse bowel was too constricted and we would need to relax that to get this line to move. Right? I would have, and I would have told them that these things would change, that this fiber down here would speak of pain and inflammation and things like that, and that we wanted to get it to move and become straight. I would have told them that with cleansing these areas that are shaded, would become lighter because darker areas tend to have a lower resilience and they're a lower reactivity. So DC has another question that I'm gonna come back and show you how we analyze this as a constitutional iridologist. She says, my answer made sense. So we aren't looking to change the appearance, just allow it to be the blueprint for a jumping off point. Yes, that is exactly it. And again, when you understand the anatomy and physiology, you understand what the different markings mean and how they can influence how the body is performing, right? So I'm so glad that made sense for you. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so as a constitutional iridologist, first I would want to know what this client's symptoms were. As a Jensenian, I didn't care. I was just gonna tell them what I saw, what was wrong and what they needed to do. And it would usually be a list this long of things they needed to do. As a constitutional iridologist, I want to understand what are your symptoms? So we're going to pretend that this client um, is maybe in their mid fifties and has come in with symptoms of arthritis. And they're not happy about that because mid fifties is too young to be that old, right? So I'm going to look at their eyes. I'm going to ask, what is your diet like? Now, if this person has a perfectly organic, wonderful diet and, you know, vegan or whatever they're doing, and it's all perfect, then I know we need to work on some other things. But I'm going to actually probably start overall and say, yes, this is the eye that shows the constitution that this person tends to want to be too acidic genetically. Whether their diet is perfect or not, their body's always going to push them towards being too acidic in their tissues, which is what sets the minerals out of balance, which leads to the arthritic symptoms. And from there, I'm going to come and I'm going to say, hmm, this gray edge that is right here at the inner edge of the iris tells me you may not be able to produce enough acids to digest your protein. How does it feel when you eat protein? Oh, it sits in my stomach. Do you get gassy? Oh my goodness, yes. 
All right, so we know that one of the leading causes of your acid imbalance is that you're not handling your proteins well. We want to support that. We know that transverse bowel is constricted and that this person inherently wants to be leaking mucus and acid into the blood and lymph through that transverse bowel. How do we know if they're doing that or not? Well, they've got symptoms. In this case, it's the arthritis. Some people, it might show up as actual mucus in bowel movements, or it might show up as muscle pain, or maybe sinus issues, or recurring tonsil kinds of issues, which are all mucus and inflammation problems, can also show up as skin problems like eczema and psoriasis. But I'm going to focus on the arthritis because that's what my client has come in about. So then I'm going to move out. I'm actually going to ignore these areas for today because they're not about arthritis. They're not giving me information about this client's arthritic predisposition. I come out to the lymphatic area to zone six, and I see that this person is inherently predisposed to lymphatic congestion. I don't know if this person is congested or not. So I'm going to ask, what do you do for physical activity? Well, I lift weights three times a week. I like to go for walks and runs the other days and I'm pretty active. Great. Your lymphatic system is likely not congested. Do you have a history of swollen lymph glands? Nope, not at all. Excellent. Wonderful. Tonsillitis as a child? Nope, not at all. Adenoids? Nope, not a problem. Great. So this client is doing what he or she needs to do to keep the lymphatic system moving. My best move here is to give them a pat on the back and say, that is what you can do. That's the best thing you can do. You are right on track. Isn't that wonderful to be able to give a client an accolade to tell them that they are doing things well? And then we come out to the skin zone and we know our skin is our third kidney. It tells us, this tells us that the skin zone doesn't like to excrete its acid properly, but the other organ that gets involved in that is the kidneys. And as we look down here, we see we've got some transversals, which says kidneys may want to have an attitude problem at some point in time. So I'm going to ask any history of skin issues, eczema or psoriasis or boils or acne, things like that. And if there's a yes, then we know we've got to support the skin. At the very least, I'm probably going to suggest some dry skin brushing, right? To help that skin exfoliate and breathe better. But if there's no obvious problems, I don't need to dive in and be heavy handed with this. You know, I'll suggest as I always do to use ecologically friendly and biologically friendly products on our body and a little dry skin brushing, you know, some sauna-ing if they can, because that helps us to sweat. That's a great way to help cleanse. And so these are important things, but I'm, as I come back to the digestion then, this is really where I want to focus. And I'm actually going to focus our, our work on the stomach. I'm going to maybe use some betaine hydrochloric acid or some apple cider vinegar because protein is their weak link. I'm going to get them digesting their proteins better. If the bowel movements seem to be healthy, if the bowel transit time is good, if they are not constipated, they're not having alternating constipation diarrhea, I'm probably not going to worry about this because chances are this person has already figured out what foods work for the bowel and what foods don't. So what I've really done is I've looked at this eye overall on a constitutional level. I've done very little dissecting. I've come up with a plan that says we start with the digestive tract. We make sure this person is breaking their proteins down properly. And we might have to rebalance their protein consumption for choices and timing in the day. And that's probably my starting point. I'm going to give my client a month to come to terms with that, to get it all under their belt before we decide, is there a next thing to do? Because chances are, that's going to be all they need to do. And by simply making sure the proteins are tracked and that they are digesting really well, we are likely going to see some reduction in those arthritic symptoms. Pretty simple.
not complex and not overwhelming. Did that make sense? If that made sense to you, I'd like to see it makes sense in the comments box. And I'd love to see that whether you're with me on Facebook, Instagram, or the webinar as a live attendee. Makes so much sense. Yes, 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 Joanna and DC. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, let's look at a different eye type. We all know, yes, Celia, and yes, Martha, wonderful. Let's look at a different eye type, right? Because blue eyes are pretty easy to read. Let's look at a lymphatic eye. No, I'm sorry, not lymphatic, biliary. Let's look at a biliary eye. So this is a biliary eye. So we know it's biliary because it, we don't see any visible blue in the iris, but we can see fibers. And that means this is a biliary eye. So a Jensenian would look at this eye, would look at the fact, I would first off say there are only two colors of eye, blue and brown. If you've got anything in between, you're toxic, you're full of garbage, you need to do some heavy duty cleansing. You can cleanse this person until you are literally blue in the face and you are not going to see this pigment shift right? You are not going to see the pigment shift. You are only going to get frustrated and your client's going to get frustrated because they're working so hard, but they're not seeing the changes. So instead we recognize that what this is, this is actually the merging of a lymphatic parent and a hematogenic parent, a little bit of genetic influence from both sides. When we see this and we talk about this being from a Jensenian perspective, we would be saying things like, you have parasites. We need to do a cleanse and get rid of those parasites. We would talk about how toxic their body is and how it's just full of so much garbage that we really need to detox. We need to do a liver detox. We're going to say, oh man, and your skin is just a mess. Tell me about your skin problems. And they might not have any. That was the problem I had as a Jensenian iridologist. I would talk about the problems that their eyes said they had and the client would go, nope, 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 nope. Oh, maybe that one. Nope, nope, nope. So I was wrong so much of the time that it was frustrating very frustrating. So that was when I went constitutional. Now what we know from constitutional is these eyes are not going to change when we do a cleanse, when we do a fast, what we, and we don't care that they don't change. What we care about is did the person's health improve? Have we changed their health? Have we supported their body and helped it to work better? When I say the eyes don't change, I've, I've kind of lied a little bit there because the eyes do change. What we see is the eyes continue to mature with age and we will frequently, frequently see pigment accumulate. And I can show you cases from my own family, just about well, my husband, myself and all of my kids. We've got pictures over 20 years that show the sequential accumulation of pigment but do not ever show for all of the healthy work my husband and I do, do not show anything ever going away out of the eyes. So each of the base eye colors has specific inherent traits that we see more of. Uh, when we see this type of an eye that we again call biliary, we know that this person is a little more prone to some liver imbalances or liver insufficiencies. We'll also be have some of those blue-eyed lymphatic traits, which means a little more prone to being out of balance on their acid levels. And so as we see an eye like this, we need to ask questions. Again, we find out what their symptoms are, what are their concerns. For example, if this was a woman in her 50s who was going through menopause and having a nightmare of a time, we know that that goes back to adrenals and liver. We're going to ask the liver oriented questions for diet, uh, for digestion, for other symptoms, because I can guarantee if she's got hot flashes, she's got more symptoms than that on a lot of levels. So these eyes will never ever, ever turn blue. We will get frustrated and walk away before they turn blue. As a constitutional iridologist, again, I'm going to find out what is she doing nine times out of 10 when I see an eye like this and it's a female client and she's got hot flashes and she's in her mid fifties. 
I'll ask her, what's your diet like? And she'll go through it. I'll ask her about beverages and she's drinking coffee. Coffee is brutal for both the liver and the adrenal glands. And I can see that her liver from all of the browns and golds that are in her, that her liver mm, wants to be cranky and wants to run the show. It's kind of like a spoiled brat. And we have to take away what that spoiled brat is craving, which is the coffee. And what we find, if this was a woman who had menopausal hot flashes, that taking away the coffee, just taking away the coffee, will often correct the hot flashes by at least 50%, if not more. I've had some women say 95% improvement for simply taking away the coffee when they had lymphatic or when they had biliary eye rides. So again, we focus our questions on what the client needs. These do not mean a guarantee of parasites. They mean a slight increased risk of parasites if this person were to oh, go and drink mountain water that hadn't been purified, perhaps. But they are not a guarantee of parasites. Instead, when we combine these lines with these rings, it gives us information about the nervous system and how this person deals with stress, which tells us about the nutrient balance they need, right, which helps us to better tailor a program for them to meet their needs. How is that fitting for you? Are you liking this? If you like this, give me a like in, and I don't care how you give me the like in the comments box. Is that making sense? If it is, give me a like. Let's look at our last type of eye that we want to talk about today. And yes, Celia, thank you so much for that. I appreciate knowing that I haven't put you to sleep and that you're liking what we're talking about. When we see this, this is a true hematogenic eye. The hematogenic eye is your true brown eye. Now, for those of you who are with me on Instagram, I'm going to take my camera closer. What you see here, besides a reflection of me in my computer screen, for which I apologize, is you see contraction furrows, you see radial furrows, you see absolutely no blue, and you see no fiber. We don't see the actual fibers radiating outwards. We see ripples, but we don't see fibers. So understanding this, you know, if we don't see the fibers and we don't see a lot of color variation in this, how much information can we really get from this kind of an eye? We can still get a ton of information. And again, we ask the questions, what are your concerns? What are your concerns? So this was a female um, in her mid thirties, an Asian female who came to me wanting to get pregnant. As we started working out in that first appointment, um, as a Jensenian, I would have looked at this and gone, I don't know, why aren't you getting pregnant, right? Um, but what I see in here as a constitutional iridologist is several things that tip me off to ask more questions, all righty? So what we see is we see this, which is not a true iris sign. This is a sclera sign. It is acquired. It builds over time, and it tells me that she doesn't handle her carbs properly, that she's, her cholesterol is likely out of balance. Well, if the cholesterol is out of balance, it is the building block for estrogen, right? And so that tells me that her estrogen is likely out of balance as well. So that's my first thing. When I look and I see she's got radiating lines and she's got the circles coming around, that tells me that she likely internalizes her stress and burns through her B vitamins very quickly. All right, we need our B vitamins to support our liver, to help us metabolize our carbs, to help us balance our cholesterol, to help us then balance our hormones. Are you seeing the connections here? All right, then um, from there, I did ask her about her diet because she's Asian. And what I found is that most of my first generation Canadian Asians that uh, actually have lived in Asia, when they come over here, they keep the white rice and add to it the worst of what North America has to offer. That's not a good thing. 
So I asked her about her diet. It was absolutely awful. Like I'm talking so awful. I asked her about her menstrual cycles. They were way out of whack, typically running 60 to 90 days. And so I asked her if her doctor had ever diagnosed her with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now there is no marking in the eye that is showing me ovarian anything, especially PCOS. There is no marking that is that specific. But based on what I saw in her eyes and based on the fact that her cycles were so far apart, I asked her, and I also asked her if, she'd, if they'd ever suggested that she might have type two diabetes. To which she went, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that. Hmm, okay, there we go. Now, because she has these very, very dark brown eyes, beautiful brown eyes, I know that she likely actually doesn't methylate her B vitamins either. Now, in order to actually conceive, you need to have your folate, your folic acid needs to be methylated. It can't be the folic acid form. It has to be the methyl tetrahydrofolate form, right? And there will be a spelling test. So I hope you know how to spell that one. And so what we did with her um, is we made sure she was on a prenatal vitamin that had the methylated Bs. We cleaned up her diet. We really worked on her diet. We worked on her activity level. She internalizes her stress. So we got her walking as exercise and her husband was excited about that. So good. But a Jensenian would have looked at this and would have said, oh, your cholesterol is out of balance, but they wouldn't have tied it back to the liver. They would have just said, how's your memory? They would have focused it on the brain, Arcus senilis. They would have talked about how she was under so much stress. She was ready to have a nervous breakdown. Look at how many rows of these rings she's got. They would have talked about parasites, right? But they wouldn't have picked up on the methylation issue. They wouldn't have actually been able to trace it back to a metabolic disorder like PCOS because they don't as a Jensenian, we were not trained to trace things back. We took this at face value. Oh, you need more B vitamins and vitamin C and you're stressed out, you're going to explode. Not useful information. So when we're doing constitutional, we are really looking at the person as a whole. We are connecting the dots. We are using the eyes to understand why the client has the symptoms they have, where the weak links are, where the weak links are that need to be supported. We are in no way telling our client what is wrong. Does that make sense? We're absolutely not diagnose, diagnosing. I am so surprised I didn't end up in jail as a Jensenian for the diagnoses that I was doing. My goodness, I should have ended up in jail, but thank goodness my clients were nicer than that. Um, but we never diagnose as a constitutional iridologist. That is so, so important. So constitutional is a holistic assessment tool. It requires having a conversation with the client because the conversations we have, the questions we ask, the information our clients give us, gives us an even deeper understanding of the eyes. I love what Bill Caratona taught me when I first studied with him. He said, the eyes don't give us the answers. They teach us what questions to ask. And I absolutely love that. As a holistic practitioner, it makes so much sense. So then when we're looking at an eye holistically, we want to consider these freckles that we see in the eye. Now, for those of you, oh, you can see those on Instagram. So we're good. So when we look at this, again, a Jensenian iridologist would talk about toxicity. They would talk about the need to cleanse. They would talk about congestion. In constitutional iridology, we know these pigments are inherent. They are a part of the genetic structure. And even when these pigments are not there at birth, they're not there at six, six months, but oh my goodness, they're there when the person turns 21 or when the person turns 45, it reveals to us the genetic programming what genes are being turned on and turned off and when that's happening right so if we see a pigment magically appear we know based on the color of the pigment which organ is inherently wanting to be out of balance 
And based on the placement of the pigment, we understand that connection of which organ is going to suffer the most because of that imbalance. Does that make sense? So every pigment gives us at least two pieces of information, the organ of origin and the organ of destination. So we're not going into the exact meaning of all the pigments today because that's a part of the course that my students pay for. But again, each pigment gives us information and each pigment may not be important to the here and the now or even in the long run. We don't dissect each and every pigment because we don't need to. When we understand the constitution, when we understand, oh, we have this color of pigment, it is wanting to wield a big influence. Doesn't it make more sense to support the organ that created the pigment first rather than supporting every organ that's being affected by it? Go to the source, right? That makes sense. Do you like that one? In North America, again, this iris would be considered to be extremely toxic and would need a ton of cleansing. We have what a Jensenian would call nerve rings, but we call them contraction furrows. This, um, these, again, according to a Jensenian would be, oh, you're headed for a nervous breakdown. This is bad news. We know that's not true. That whitish outer fog on the iris, they would say is cholesterol blockages from a sodium imbalance. And that's why it's called a sodium cholesterol ring. And they would be talking about arterial blockages and all kinds of things like that. There is only a moderate correlation to things like that. But in constitutional iridology, Opa, yes, you're getting this. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you for saying that. And Martha says, love the pigment info, thank you. In constitutional iridology, again, the base color of the eye teaches us where we are more likely to see issues. The placement of the pigment, the color of the pigment, tells us the or organ that is the source of the problem. And the placement tells us which organ is going to suffer for it. When we see something that suggests liver insufficiencies, and when we see the impact of the, the uh, pigments on the digestive zone, on the nutrient transportation zone, we begin to understand whether nutrients are likely circulating well or not, or have an inherent tendency to circulate well or not. And if they tend to not circulate well, we of course want to go in and correct the food choices to reduce the amount of gumming up in the nutrient circulatory pathways to increase how much value this person gets out of their food. When we see so many contraction furrows, we know that means this person is a go-getter, right? Are you gonna stop a go-getter? Not likely. So what are you gonna do instead? Instead, you are going to support that nervous system, right? And I hope we haven't dropped. It's looking like my internet might be a little unstable. So I hope you're still with me. I know on Instagram you are. There we go. I hope that didn't drop out for those of you on the webinar. Yes, I'm still on. Thank you. Can you hear me again, DC? Um, can you hear me now? Because yes, we dropped off there for a moment. We're back. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, my internet pooped out there for a bit. So again, the white balance tells us, or the white around the outside tells us about the carbohydrate metabolism. So what we're really going to need to do with this client is have a conversation about their carbs. And thank you, Opa, for letting me know we're still good there. How their carbs, their choice of carbs, how their body handles the carbs. How can we help their body handle the carbs better? We want to have a conversation about stress. What kind of nutritional support does this person need to handle stress better? Are there lifestyle things that can be done? Is this person doing lots? Because you know what? She's got all of these contraction furrows. Maybe she figured it out a long time ago that she really needs to have rest, that she needs to eat meals on a schedule to keep her energy balanced, and that she needs to do yoga and go for a walk every day. Well, if she's doing all of those things great, 
Of course, we're still going to see these. They're not going to go away. We can ask her how she feels like how she feels she's doing with that. If she says, I'm doing well, I'm really I, I deal with my stress effectively. I, I feel happy most of the time. I'm good. I feel calm most of the time. And when I don't, I know what to do about it. I don't even need to go there with this client. I can once again give them a big hooray. Good for you. Keep it up. So glad you pay attention to your body. Right. So it's always at least a two way conversation, if not a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth conversation. So important. Again, in North American iridology, this uh, person would be told they have massive problems with parasites. They've got all these lines radiating out. But parasites do not change our genetic structure. If I have parasites and I'm having babies, those parasites are not encoded on my child's genes. And so we are not going to see parasites in the eye, right? The only way you'll see parasites in the eye is if it's that really gross one that embeds itself under the surface of the eye and you can see the worm under the, the, uh, under the sclera of the eye. But we're not gonna see a marking for them here in the eye. Instead, with constitutional iridology, we say that this person lives in their sympathetic nervous system, that they tend, they have the tendency to overreact to many things that are stressful. That's where we need to have the conversation because she's probably figured this out a long time ago, right? And if she has, great. If she hasn't, then we need to have that conversation about how to support the nervous system, how to support the adrenal glands, how much rest, how much relaxation do, do they need? However, what we do see down here is that this person, this is a female in her mid thirties again, has a couple of little lacuna. These are sitting in an ovary area. So I'm, if she's come in about fertility issues, I'm definitely going to ask about her ovaries. Has she had an ultrasound? Does she know anything about her, her ovarian health? Has she had any testing done? I want to understand that. Um, we see over here that there's a little break. I'm going to ask questions then over here about the heart, the bronchioles, the thyroid, the parathyroid. Of course, thyroid can influence fertility a lot too. We call the thyroid the third ovary. So we want to make sure that we ask the right questions. And we only need to ask questions that are focused on giving us the information we need to hear. And we only need to focus on creating a program that will take our client to the next level in their health. One appointment, right? We just need to give them enough homework to give them something to make progress between now and when we see them again in a month. If we give them more than that, they are likely not going to do it all. They are likely not going to get the results we know they could get. So we use the information we gather from the eyes to create a very succinct program that we know they can manage and they can manage well over the next month. They can make this program part of their wellness habit and then when we see them again next month, we build on that, give them the next piece of information to take them up one more level. So important. The next layer of information we consider here is the structure of these lacunae, these fibers, how the fibers are sitting in the eye. This again, um, in North American, this teaches us, would teach us that each one of these represents a specific problem that is happening right now. If we did enough of a cleanse, we would see healing lines come in, these would totally go away. Not cool, not cool. You know, when you do that, this person's got so many problems, they're never gonna be well. We've got problems in the brain and in the kidneys and the pituitary and parathyroid and the bronchioles, and my goodness, they're a walking disaster, right? But what we know when we are doing this with constitutional iridology is these are inherited. So we need to ask about a personal or family history of issues in these areas, but only if they're appropriate for what the client has come in for. If this client's coming in about arthritis, I am probably not going to ask about these. 
if they're coming in for hormonal imbalance, I may ask about them. If they're coming in specifically for something that is heart or lung related, I will ask about them, right? But I'm only going to ask about things that are relevant to the client, the problem my client has brought in for the time being, because the purpose of this is to not overwhelm them. Have you ever overwhelmed a client? I want to know if you have, I want to put over what I want you to put overwhelm in the co comment box. I'm going to tell you in those first 10 years of my practice, overwhelm was my middle name. I overwhelmed my clients all the time. So you can be vulnerable here. Michael says, maybe cute Michael, DC Michael. And Martha says, sadly, yes. Right. Because that's what we were taught to do 40 years ago was vomit everything out all over them. And it's not necessary. Sometimes, because these get passed down three to four generations, they might, may not be relevant for your client right now. We know healing lines do not form. Every fiber that we see in the eye was there from, from conception. This is not a sign of healing. This is just looking down one layer deeper in the iris. These are not going to go away. This is an inherent pattern. In North America, every uh, every in North American iridology, every marker, every pigment, every fiber that's going a little wonky, everything you see in the eye is relevant and current and needs to be addressed right now. And it's really overwhelming and it's really hard. We've got a fiber up here that's doing funny things. We've got some down here, really hard, really hard. When we are holistic, we take that step back. We look at the eye as a whole. We look at the person as a whole. We connect the dots. We determine what is the next step this client needs to take. And if we've taken photos of their eyes, we use that same set of photos for at least a year to 18 months. We may reshoot again to see if we've got more pigment developing. Uh, we add sclerology. Maybe there's some changes in the sclera, which can be resolved, which can be faded out. And so we would use that to see if we were making progress along with our client's symptoms. Again, a North American iridologist would say this person has a weak constitution. Opa says she's overwhelmed people. Thank you for being so vulnerable, Opa. I appreciate that. A weak constitution. Celia says that was her training. Yeah. So just how would that make your day? You go to see someone, they go, you've got a weak constitution. Like there is no hope for you. You're never going to be strong. The fact of the matter is this is not a weak constitution. It is just a different constitution. This person um, is what we call connective tissue type, which means their connective tissues may not be as resilient, which means we need to understand why. Why don't they repair their connective tissues as well as other people would? Well, it's part of how they're put together. It probably goes back to digestion. It may have some liver impact as well. So we need to to put it all together and create a wellness program that will help our client maximize their constitutional, um, their, their uh, rather their connective tissue as much as they can. You know, about the only thing I would suggest for a person with this, this type of eyes, don't get into contact sports, right? Other than that, have a great life. Let's work on your health. So when we understand the interrelationship of different markers, it's kind of like having a Star Trek tricorder. It really points us in the right direction. When we do holistic iridology, using the iris map is actually the very last step of an assessment. And sometimes I don't even use the iris map at all in an assessment, right? Because I look at the constitution. I want to know how this person is put together. And when I understand the constitution, I, I get how the body actually works. I get how everything flows from one to the next to the next, and I can find the root problem. And actually, when you know your constitutional iridology really well, you don't even, to do a base reading, you don't even need a magnifying glass. If you've got good light and you can get to like within a foot of the person, you can see enough of the color and the fiber structure and the pigments to understand the basic things you need to do to get your clients started, which is very, very exciting. Yes, there's a lot of detail to learn. Yes, there's a lot of understanding that has to happen. This is why I insist that my students have anatomy and physiology under their belt before they take my course. 
because then I can help them dig even deeper in understanding how this all works. Is this making sense for you? If this is making sense, I'd love to see a makes sense in the comments. With your permission, thank you, Joanna. With your permission, I would love to take just literally 30 seconds to introduce the course. Now, it's not even starting till September 9th. So, yeah, I'm not trying to sell you anything here. I'm just planting a seed in the back of your brain. The Dynamic Iridology Assessment System course is the only live, online, fully mentored course for nutritionists, herbalists, and naturopaths and holistic practitioners of all kind who want to streamline their clinical work without sacrificing client care. I find that way too many holistic practitioners see the client and then they send the client away and then the practitioner goes and spends two or three or four. I've heard one practitioner spent 20 hours creating a program to bring it back to their client. And the sad part is practitioners don't usually get paid for that time that they're spending on their own creating the programs. So the purpose of the dynamic iridology assessment system is yes, to teach you iridology, constitutional iridology. Yes, to teach it to you in a way where you can be extremely confident. Yes, to teach it to you in a way that you understand the connections and that you understand what questions to ask so that you can create the programs that your client needs to take them to the next appointment and do it while you are with your client. No more unpaid homework for my iridology students. We don't allow it, right? And it means that the programs are simple and concise enough. Thank you, Mathen, for telling me that that made sense and OPA. The, um, the, what this does is it then helps your client to be much more successful. Mathen is asking, are there any books I can recommend? No, there are not. And the reason I say that is because the books don't teach you the connections. They only teach the markings. And because they don't teach the markings, they don't teach the way I do, which is to teach the understanding of the connections. Even my textbook, as much as I try to teach that in my textbook, it's not quite... It's just hard to do. We practice a lot in the class and I make you, I, I ask questions and make you give answers and you ask questions. Uh, you tell me what questions you would want to ask and things like that, right? So we do a lot of, of clinical type of practice in the class to make sure that it's all working for you and that you're getting it all. So just as a heads up, the next course start date is September 9th. There is an info webinar that is coming up in June and I don't have that date handy right now. I should have put that in here. If you would like to be invited to that info webinar, just to learn more about the class, about what's included, about the, the dates and times and everything like that, make sure you give me your email address. You can PM that to me and I will add you to the email list. And then, um, and then you will receive the invitation to that and to more, more things that we do like this that are free so that you can decide for yourself if this is the right course for you, if it's the right time for you to take this course. And that is what I have for you today. And Mathen says, interested, excellent. Mathen, PM your email address to me, please so that I can make sure that I add you to my email list. That goes for all of you, please do that. And with that, my friends, I must run. I have a client starting in one minute and um, we've gone a little longer than I planned to, but I hope this all made sense for you. And I hope to see you again very soon. You are all so very welcome. And I will talk to you again very soon. Have a good day, bye for now.